You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Hey guys, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I want to go over what I think is both the best and worst weapons manufacturer in this game. In this video, I will discuss all the weapons manufacturers. I'll discuss what makes each manufacturer's weapons unique. I'll talk about good and bad weapons from each manufacturer. And I'll also discuss how bad or good their respective unique weapons are. After that, I'll discuss who I think is the worst manufacturer, followed by who I think is the best manufacturer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about our first manufacturer, and that's going to be Bandit. Bandit is generally known for having high magazine sizes, however the rest of their stats are generally underwhelming. In my experience, most Bandit weapons are fairly bad. That said, some of the best unique, legendary, and serif weapons are actually pretty good. For example, the Bandit Slaga, Jolly Roger, Tatler, and even the Sawbar Perlescent is actually pretty decent as well. However, most of the other weapons that Bandit has to offer are fairly underwhelming if you ask me. Bandit is limited to pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, rocket launchers, and some grenades as well. Um, in general, I would say that rocket launchers offered by Bandit are actually quite good. Uh, for the most part, you are getting a high projectile count with relatively low ammo consumption. However, most of the other weapon types on offer from Bandit are largely inferior to their counterparts from other manufacturers. As an example, an E-Tech Bandit SMG is simply not as desirable as one from TDOR, Dahl, Malawan, or Hyperion. Pretty much every manufacturer makes pistols, Dahl, Jacobs, and Torg make pretty good assault rifles, and Jacobs, Torg, and Hyperion make some of the best shotguns in the game. So overall, Bandit has some really awesome unique weapons, however, most of their other weapons are fairly bad, save for Bandit rocket launchers. Dahl is known for burst fire while aiming down sights and having really low recoil on their weapons. While Dahl weapons don't possess the highest damage, Dahl weapons are generally pretty good overall. Dahl makes pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. Of these four weapon types, their sniper rifles tend to be the least popular simply because their sniper rifles also burst fire like all of their other weapons, and this has a tendency to consume ammunition that you didn't need to consume. Otherwise, I think you will find that the burst fire works quite well on pistols, assault rifles, and SMGs. As far as unique, legendary, serif, and pearlescent weapons go, Dahl is generally hit or miss. There are definite hits when it comes to certain weapons like the Last Cow, Sandhawk, and Hornet. There are also some pretty good uniques like the Teapot, Sloth, the legendary Vrook, Seraph Seraphim, and the legendary Pitchfork. However, there are also uniques that are misses like the Dominator and the Bearcat. Uh, the problems with these weapons is that they can't crit or they simply consume way too much ammo to be practical. Uh, as far as grenades go, Dahl manufactures Bouncing Betty Grenades, which are really useful for fighting raid bosses as these slag versions can keep the raid bosses slagged longer. Um, in my opinion, Dahl's fairly decent, and they've mostly got pretty good weapons, with only a few glaringly awful ones. There's also Hyperion, which is known for their negative recoil and very high maximum accuracy on their weapons. Unlike weapons from other manufacturers, which get less accurate as you fire them, Hyperion weapons have a tendency to become more accurate as you fire them at enemies. In Borderlands 2, Hyperion makes pistols, SMGs, shotguns, and sniper rifles. Like Dahl, their sniper rifles have a tendency to be unpopular because Hyperion snipers tend to sway before you fire the first shot. Additionally, the first shot is less accurate than it otherwise could be thanks to Hyperion's negative recoil gimmick. Otherwise, Hyperion pistols, SMGs, and shotguns greatly benefit from negative recoil and become far more accurate than they otherwise would be. Hyperion has a respectable balance of great unique weapons as well. From my experience, I would say only the Actualizer Seraph SMG, the Unique Bane SMG, and the Legendary Logan's Pistol are really the lousy weapons. 
Most of the other uniques are pretty good, like the Fibber, Lady Fist, Bitch, Slow Hand, Morning Star, and Fremington's Edge. And then of course, the Hyperion Unique Shotguns are also amazing, because you've got the Heartbreaker, Conference Call, Interfacer, and the Butcher, which again, are all fantastic weapons. I would say Hyperion tends to be one of the better manufacturers in Borderlands 2 when it comes to weapons, as most of the weapons they tend to make are pretty good. You also have Jacobs. Jacobs weapons are usually non-elemental 99% of the time, always semi-automatic with high base damage, high accuracy, and boosted critical hit bonus. Jacobs weapons have a tendency to have recoil and accuracy recovery problems, however you may find that one or two shots is usually enough to wipe out whatever's in front of you. In Borderlands 2, Jacobs only makes pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. And from my experience, all of these weapons are quite good, and I can't really say that I have any complaints with any of them. Well, that said, maybe their assault rifles can leave something to be desired in later difficulties, but they're usually fine in lower difficulties. I'd say sort of like Dahl, Jacob's weapons have a tendency to be hit or miss when it comes to their uniques. You have awesome weapons like the Becca, Twister, and the Maggie. You have pretty good uniques like the Triketra, Trespasser, Cobra, Buffalo, the Seraph Hawkeye, and the Law Pistol. However, you also have other weapons like the Godfinger, Unforgiven, Rex, Stinkpot, and Damned Cowboy, which may be cool in concept, but they are either too difficult to use in practice, or they're just terrible. With that said, Jacobs has some great non-unique weapons that are popular in the Borderlands community, like the Gatling Gun Assault Rifle, the Quad Shotgun, and the Muck Muck and Diob Sniper Rifles. The only issue with Jacobs is that it's only non-element, and in later difficulties, that can be a bit of a problem. However, with that said, the critical hit bonus can make up for that somewhat. We also have Malawan. Malawan guns always have an element and are known for their capacity to inflict burn, corrode, electrocute, or slag status effects on enemies. When it comes to weapons, they manufacture pistols, SMGs, sniper rifles, and rocket launchers. And of these four weapon types, I would say that a lot of people really like their sniper rifles. Especially sniper rifles like the Malawan Snyder, which is one of the best elemental sniper rifles that you can get for most characters. A lot of players also really like Malawan E-Tech SMGs as well, as they tend to deal great damage. Malawan sports some of the best unique and legendary weapons in the game. Uh, Moxie seems to really like them as the Ruby, Grog Nozzle, Bad, as well as the Good Touch, the Crit, and the Sharia Mi are all Malawan weapons that heal the player based on damage dealt. Otherwise, you have amazing weapons like the Pimpernel, which some would consider to be the game's best sniper rifle, and the Norfleet, which is the game's best rocket launcher. And there are also a few other great legendaries like the Hellfire, Volcano, and the Thunderball Fists. Now, there are some bad uniques too, like the Storm, Wanderlust, and the Chulain. However, they are certainly the minority. But in general, I would say Malawan weapons are pretty good. And though I do feel that their non-unique launchers and pistols leave something to be desired, the Norfleet and the Grog Nozzle make up for that. As for TDR, TDR weapons tend to be pretty awkward the first time you use them, as the whole point is to fire and then throw, as opposed to fire for a bit and then reload. Uh, TDR makes pistols, SMGs, shotguns, and rocket launchers, and of the four, I would say the only bad weapon type that they make are rocket launchers. While there are some that like E-Tech rocket launchers, I personally feel that TDO rocket launchers in general are pretty bad, especially when you compare that to like Vladoff, Bandit, or even Malawan or Torg. Uh, with that said, TDO makes phenomenal shotguns, SMGs, and pistols that are perfect for firing and then throwing. When it comes to uniques, there aren't really that many compared to other manufacturers, and they're sort of hit or miss. Uh, there are amazing uniques like the Avenger, Baby Maker, Gunnerang, Omen, Blockhead, and Octo, while there are also bad uniques like the Bunny, Retcher, and the Deliverance. 
It's funny to mention this, but I just mentioned all of the TDR weapons that appear in Borderlands 2. But I digress. Um, I really like TDR weapons, though I think I will admit that they probably aren't the single best manufacturer out there, simply because they have the Seraph Retro Shotgun and the Legendary Bunny Launcher, which are absolutely terrible. Even still, if you like TDR reloads, TDR pistols, SMGs, and shotguns are great. But let's move on to Torg. Torg is known for purely explosive weapons in Borderlands 2 that fire a unique gyrojet projectile that typically deals more damage, however at slower projectile speed, which can make distance combat a little more difficult. In Borderlands 2, Torg manufactures pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, and rocket launchers, and I can't really say that I have any major complaints about any of them. Now, Torg has a lot of unique, legendary, seraph, and pearlescent weapons in Borderlands 2, and these are of varying quality, and as has been established in this video, they're usually hit or miss, however, they're mostly miss. Now, granted, you're getting some really great guns like the Unkempt Herald, possibly the Flacker and the Sword Explosion, however, you're also getting quite a few bad weapons like the Devastator, Seeker, Tunguska, Landscaper, Evil Smasher, and quite a few others. A large amount of poor quality unique weapons is what really brings Torg down for me personally. But again, with that said, you've got like the Unkempt Herald, which is probably the best pistol in the game. The Flacker is really good if you swap it with a Torg rocket launcher to increase the Flacker's damage. And then of course there are other weapons like the Creamer that are fairly decent, and the Sword Explosion is also really good. Um, it's just some of those guns like the Devastator, Seeker, Tunguska, and the Landscaper. They're just awful. And finally, we have Vladov, and Vladov is known for producing weapons with high rate of fire. Uh, Vladov produces pistols, assault rifles, rocket launchers, and sniper rifles. For the most part, I would say that Vladov's selection of non-unique weapons is really good. Uh, some weapons like the Droog sniper rifle, the E-Tech Topnia launcher, and Anarchist pistol are quite popular within the community. This is mostly because these weapons tend to provide pretty good DPS, or in the case of the Topnia, it's basically a poor man's Norfleet. In my personal opinion, Vladov has a really great selection of uniques. Of course, you get the Legendary Infinity, the Lyuta or White Death, uh, the Seraph Lead Storm, and the Stinger, and even the unique Hail, Kitten, and Rapier Assault Rifles are really good in their own right. There are a few questionable weapons, like the Legendary Shreddifier and the Seraph Patriot, but I wouldn't say that they are virtually impossible to use. Granted, both weapons leave something to be desired, but I think you could certainly do a whole lot worse with weapons from other manufacturers. Okay, so now you may be wondering, who is the worst weapons manufacturer? Well, if I did have to pick one, I'm going to have to say that it's probably Bandit. Uh, the main reason for this is that while Bandit does have some truly excellent unique weapons, most of their other weapons have largely inferior damage accuracy or reload speed compared to guns from other manufacturers. While it's true that increasing a weapon's magazine size does improve the weapon's DPS by reducing the need to reload, you'll reach a point where higher magazine size provides only diminishing returns when it comes to DPS. One thing I will say though is that Bandit rocket launchers are actually quite good especially compared to launchers from Torg or Malawan, which simply consume way too much ammo for the amount of damage that they deal. Bandit launchers tend to provide a good balance between projectile count, overall damage, and the cost of rocket ammo per shot. You could argue that Bandit launchers are even better, and possibly even more reliable than Vladov rocket launchers, which have better ammo consumption overall but all of the other weapons made by Bandit are usually surpassed by something else that you can find. Uh, Bandit pistols, shotguns, and assault rifles are almost not even worth picking up after a certain point in the game. Now you also may be wondering, who is the best weapons manufacturer? Well, this question is a lot tougher to answer. However, if I did have to pick one, I'd probably pick either Hyperion or Vladov, leaning more in favor of Hyperion. In my opinion, Hyperion has a tendency to make really good weapons aside from sniper rifles, and some unique Hyperion pistols, shotguns, and SMGs are consistently among some of the best weapons in Borderlands 2. Think about it for a second. You've got the Bitch, the Fibber, 
the lady fist, the slow hand, the interfacer, the conference call, the butcher, and you've even got like the morning star, which is pretty good. Overall, Hyperion weapons are excellent. What also makes Hyperion ideal in my mind is the negative recoil. Sure, weapons can prove to be relatively inaccurate at first, and there is a bit of a learning curve there. However, as you acquire higher quality weapons from Hyperion, the amount of time it takes to achieve maximum accuracy is significantly reduced. My only real complaint with Hyperion is in the case of Hyperion sniper rifles, where if you're playing with a lower field of view on Xbox 360 or PS3, it's a lot harder to use a Hyperion sniper rifle than it is to use one from either Malawan or Jacobs. In general, I'd recommend you avoid Bandit unless you're getting a unique weapon with red tech or if you come across a non-E-Tech rocket launcher from Bandit. Thing is, I think you can find a better pistol, assault rifle, SMG, and shotgun from any other manufacturer in Borderlands 2. On the flip side, I think if you see Hyperion or Vladov weapons of blue rarity or higher, you should definitely pick them up as they may be some really good guns to use. Now, granted, this could go for any manufacturer, but I definitely think you will want a blue or purple Hyperion shotgun or a blue or purple Vladov pistol or sniper rifle. That said, I think you should still try to pick up different weapons and experiment because you may find a gun from Jacobs or Malawan that ends up being better than one from Hyperion or Vladov. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.